Good evening, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. One person's doing good. It was horrible. Why horrible? Just because, all right, don't want to disclose more. That's fine. I understand. Um, how many of you have already met with your academic advisors for advisement? Okay. By a show of hands, how many of you still need to meet with your academic advisor for advisement? Okay. I'm sure at some point they'll make an announcement or you'll have to stop by their office to come up with a good time to meet and discuss with them for registering for courses next semester. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about that, what your requirements are going to be um, coming up. And uh, we have Alice Miller Nation here from Campus Ministries. She's going to talk to us about Campus Ministries. Uh, so with that, are there any preliminary questions before we begin? No? Okay. So in terms of the first thing I want to talk about, the Arts and Science Expo uh, has been announced. This is an exposition where you can see all the work, independent studies, research projects, and honors projects that are being uh, conducted at SVU. So all the seniors who are uh, currently in the honors program will be here presenting. They'll be next to a poster. I highly suggest that you come to this. In fact, the last portion, attendance and grade for this seminar course is going to this expo, signing in. You have to speak to at least three of the honor students and you gotta get a selfie with somebody and send it to me, okay? Now, why am I having you do that? So you can go see what these others have done. Um, it will be, it'll be a good chance for you to interact and just because, uh, there's, I think there's 13-ish uh, honor students presenting. There will be many more presenting their independent research. So you can see what they're working on too. Maybe it's something that will spark a new idea for you, okay? Uh, the other benefit to this is, is what do you notice along here? Anybody see it? There's food. There'll be chicken wings, yada, yada. It starts at, the food starts at 12.30 on the 26th. It goes quick, it's really good. Typically there's chicken wings, chicken fingers, dips, all sorts of fun stuff. I don't know. Uh, if you take chemistry, there's P. Schneid right there. He's, he's scarfing it down and Dr. Ogawa is next to him. So uh, beat out P. Schneid for those chicken wings. Okay, um, that being said, this will also be on display on the 25th, so you can go, you can look at different projects on the 25th, but students will be there presenting from about 12.30 to 2 p.m. on that day, okay? So please make some time, go to it. Part of your grade in this class depends on you going to that, okay? Any questions about the Arts and Science Expo? It's not only seniors. If you are working on something that you would like to present and you're working with a faculty member, you can always present here. It's a really cool thing to check out. Okay, I asked the question about advisement meetings because of scheduling. You have to build your academic schedule for the fall. Up front, I have, I believe, all the honors courses, but the honors freshman seminar listed. You don't have to worry about the honors freshman seminar anymore. You're going to be in the big kids seminar now. Woo! All right, I was waiting for a big yell about that. Don't sound so excited, guys. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Um, check these courses out. Most of them are capped at 15. The only one that really isn't is intro uh, to, to this accounting course. Uh, for the other, some people have asked me about philosophy, philosophy 105. 105 won't be taught next semester, but it will be taught in the spring. However, you have a handful of other honor students that come before you and they have to select their courses. So if you're dead set on one, Maybe don't be super dead set because you guys are freshmen and other people get to register before you, okay? But keep these in mind. Um, how many people have not taken an honors course at all yet? 
Okay. Those people with their hands up, you have to sign up for something next semester or you won't be able to graduate on time with a degree in honors. Okay. How many people have taken one honors course? Okay. How many people are, are in have taken or are currently taking two of them? Okay. Those people, you're ahead of the game. That's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, bunch of honors students, bunch of overachievers, it's okay. Um, in terms of the schedule, you can check it out here. It will also be on the self-service thing where you sign up for classes. You can register for any of them. Um, are there any questions about the courses that are being offered? Yeah. Is there any prerequisite to the campaigns? No, there is no prerequisite to the campaigns one. It is online, which is a little bit different of a format, and that one tends to fill up first. A lot of the, um, the science students tend to gravitate towards that one just because they take classes in the morning, labs at night, so this one's like a freebie in a way. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? I saw like a semi hand up over here somewhere, but I don't know if it was really one. No? Going once. There you go. Anybody else need a picture? We're all good? Okay. You need me to put it back up? No, I got it. Okay. He's got, a, he's got a question. Oh, someone's got a question? Yeah, sorry. Let me throw that back up here. What's your question? Uh, if we, if we took like two One second, guys. Shush, shush, shush. If we took two already, like, what does that mean for next year? Like, if you took two all already, depending on your, your courses, you really can kind of relax a little bit. Remember, do you remember what the requirements are for your courses? This can be anybody. I see a hand, Navy SEAL hand signal in the back. We need five. How many of the first year courses can you take? Max, two. Could I take five 299s if I wanted to? Yes, that is okay. Could I take four 299s in one freshman level course? Yes, that is all okay. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> so if you already have two done, you can take a little bit of a breather if you want. I suggest to get it done sooner rather than later, just because uh, it makes your life easier, especially if you have tougher senior level courses. Okay. How many people are education majors? Okay. Any room in your schedule that you have to take something, which usually isn't a lot of room, sign up for something. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Next year, when you guys are in the sophomore seminar, it's gonna be more organized uh, in terms of generating ideas for your uh, honors project. We're gonna be grouping people into cohorts of similar fashions. So we'll be determining what category you think your project will be in and assigning cohorts that way, all right? As you guys trickle through, you're the first group that's going through this curriculum. The next uh, freshmen that come through, when they become sophomores, you're gonna kind of mentor them. And then as they keep going up, you guys get to be the head honchos and help them out a little bit more, okay? Any questions about that seminar? It will be more active than this seminar, or this, this whole year, this year has been about information, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, Alice, I have your thing. I'm going to pull it up. So I would like to welcome uh, Alice Miller Nation to the floor. Give her a round of applause. And she is going to talk to us about campus ministries some of the things that she does. Whoops. That's pretty. Thanks, it's from a show called Gravity Falls, I love it. Um, and uh, a little bit maybe about how, what 
what you might be thinking or possibly thinking for your honors project and how she could help you out with that. So with that, I'm gonna give you the floor. I'm gonna move away from this microphone. Would you might move Oh, I need to be over here, don't I? Yeah. And it's this mic right up here? Actually, the, the one on the tripod, I think. <laughs> the one on the tripod, okay, sounds good. And where is the camera? It is in the back, see the little blue light? Got it. Yeah, so if you look on the, the monitor to the left, you can see yourself. Oh, I see that now. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? Oh, that was really pitiful. Try again. Hi, everybody. How are you? Oh, my gosh. That's still a C, but we'll let it go. Uh, so I called this tonight thinking outside the box because a lot of times people think campus ministry, university ministries, that's not for me. But I'd like you to think about it a little bit differently, okay? Especially being honor students. Our job in university ministries is to walk with students as they ask the big questions. For every single person, the big questions are different things. If you have ever have a need for someone to just bounce ideas off or just get a different perspective or... If you feel like you're having a little meltdown or a little crisis, we're one place that you can come. But that's not all. One of the coolest things that happened last year and this year in my role. So for five years, I was the director of the Franciscan Center for Social Concern. And now I'm the director of university ministries. But a student came to me last year and said, so, and he worked at the warming house for three years. And he said, so... I'd love to figure out a way to do my honors project with the warming house. And I thought, huh, wonder what that would be like. We're gonna get to that in a few minutes. So Walter Kinder did his honors project by benchmarking different soup kitchens around the country. Mostly in, in he went to New York City, he went to Philadelphia, he went to Erie. Jamestown, and then the warming house. So five soup kitchens asked the same questions, figured out what each place's practices were and their policies, well, their policies and their practices. And now he's comparing them to the warming house and giving us recommendations. I think that's the coolest, bless you, I think that's the coolest darn honors project in the world. The other thing is it cost him some money to travel. We were able to help support him financially for his travel. That is thinking outside the box. Might need to use the keypad. And which one? Yep. Did it go? There yep, we go. So what is university ministry? So there's basically three parts. <laughs> Has anybody seen Father Steve Keen? Does anybody know who he is? So he's a friar who walks around here. Sometimes he's got a lacrosse stick in his hand or you'll see him out running. He'll, uh, he's not wearing his habit when he runs. But anyway, um, Father Steve is the, uh, he's the, what is he? He's the university chaplain. So Father Steve is sort of responsible for like liturgy and pastoral care. So things that fall into there are like masses and faith groups and pastoral care kinds of things. If you want to go play basketball, he's a great one to go play ball with. Uh, the Franciscan Center for Social Concern. So that's the warming house. Bonna Buddies, SBU at the SPCA, the SBU Food Pantry, Break the Bubble, and Silver Wolves. Mike Wasita. If you go to email him, it's H Wasita because he's from Japan and his real name is Haru. Mount Irenaeus is the third part down here in the corner, the third part of university ministries. And that's a place to go off campus to get away and build community. Okay, so those are basically, that's the nutshell version of the three different areas of university ministries. Now, this is where you get involved, maybe a little bit deeper as far as the honors pro program goes. Service learning, transformational service, and service for credit. I think one of the best kept secrets on this campus is that we have academic credit for service. I think it's called... Oh, what is it? It's SBU 105? Five, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. You, if you are a person who's really involved in service, why wouldn't you sign up for this? 
And also, you can... their honors 300, their honors experience, mm -hmm. they can utilize this too for that honors 300. Okay, like make it work for you. The cool thing about it is that you have to do a workshop to begin it. And we move it either into fall semester, like you do, you do your workshop before you leave in the spring semester, and then you could do it over the summer, but we actually attach the credits to fall semester so you don't have to pay extra money. Now, the nice thing is, is that you could get anywhere from one to three credits. That's gonna free you up in the fall semester. If you know that you have a really tough semester coming up, you could sign up for this, get all your service hours done in the summer. You do a journal, you do a reflection kind of thing. You meet with me and or, well, I'm not sure who it is right now. Um, and we just make sure that, like we just ask you some questions. It's a sit down interview conversation kind of thing and you get credit for it. It's a pass fail basically. So if you know you're gonna have a hard fall semester, this is an easy way to get it done. Now you can do the same thing spring semester. You could do the workshop. No, I don't think you can do it spring semester. I think it works better if you do it summer and fall semester, actually. Yeah, it works works better. better if you do it summer and fall semester. So if you know you're going to have a, a tough fall semester, or you see something coming up, you can get these credits out of the way. Okay? So just keep that one going. Um, transformational service. It's our hope that service changes you and changes the situation that you're in, not that you're in, where you're serving. That's our hope with all service opportunities, is that it's not just busy work, and it's not just putting in the hours and checking off the boxes. We really want you to ask those big questions when you're doing service. And service learning, you're gonna have lots of classes over your next few years that you're gonna to have to do some service hours for. University Ministries is a place that you can come and get help finding those service opportunities. So I'm gonna jump back. Do I know how to go backwards on this? Let's try that. So um, under the Franciscan Center for Social Concern, the warming house, everybody knows about the warming house and that's a great place to get service hours. We also have an awesome program in the summer that works well for that those academic credit for service. It's called the farm to table program. And actually we're still looking for people for this summer. You get compensated $2,500 plus you get room and board here on campus in the morning for 10 weeks in the summer it's a community-based program for 10 weeks you work at canical farm in the morning uh three days a week two or three days a week i can't remember I and three. three and then you work at the warming house four days a week so if you're counting hours it's not a full 40 hours a week um, and then because it's a community-based program, we have a community night every week. And then because it's a community program, we also send you off to do some fun things. So sometimes they've gone to Cedar Point. Sometimes they've gone, uh, they've come up, I live up in the Finger Lakes up near Rochester. Sometimes they've come up and we've gone kayaking on Hemlock or Canada Ice Lake. And we do the uh, ropes course at Camp Stella Morris. And then we go out and eat or eat at my house. Sometimes, sometimes the group's gone to a drive-in. One year we had students who had never been to a drive-in movie theater. So we sent them to the drive-in one night. So um, because it's a community-based program, a couple times during that 10 weeks, we try to send you out to have some fun. Um, and you could turn that experience into academic credit. Because we keep a journal as part of that program, you're sort of getting the work done. Like it's sort of like double dipping. You're you're get you're able to do two things all at once. Okay. So um warming house, Bona Buddies, the largest youth mentoring program in Cattaraugus County. That's another great place to get service. The only problem with that one is when you think about service, if you need to do like 20 hours of service for a class or for something or 12 hours of service. Bono buddies might not be the best thing for you unless you're committed to that kid. Your buddy looks forward to the same person coming week after week after week. And if you're just trying to check off your 12 hours, we're not going to suggest Bono buddies because those kids depend on you. The other thing is that the college students become quite attached to the buddies too. 
Is anybody here a mentor? We got, oh, do you become attached? Do you look forward to? A couple of years ago on the Spring into Bonus video, the student who got interviewed said, it's the best two hours of my week. I've got no responsibilities other than to make this kid feel like they're the best thing in the world. Bono Buddies not only assist the, the buddy, but it changes the SBU students too. Uh, SBU at the SBCA. I used to think this was just a soft service opportunity. Like, yeah, everybody comes back happy, smiling. You know, they walk dogs and pet cats. Until Bernie Valento, who's the VP for enrollment here at the university, said, Alice, I want to talk to you. And I thought, Oof, what happened now? And uh, he said, I want to talk to you about uh, um, one of our, what do we call, ambassadors who was doing a tour for a potential uh, Bonaventure family. And he goes, I was standing upstairs in the administration building and I heard her talking downstairs to this family who just come in. And the, one of the questions was, what extracurriculars are, curriculars are you involved here in here at Bonaventure? And she said, oh my gosh, I, uh, I'm a student leader for SBU at the SPCA. It's the best program in the world. We really make a difference. And he, like myself, perked up his ears because he sort of thought, oh, you're just going to walk dogs and pet cats. And she said, you know what? This is what she's saying to a potential family coming to Bonas. Um, the animals that are at the shelter, nobody would ever want in their house. They bite, they run, they chew up things, they scratch furniture, and they pee and poop on the floor. Nobody would want these animals in their house. It's our job every week to show up at the SPCA and to socialize these animals so that somebody would want them, so that they don't live their whole life in a shelter. Bernie said to me, Alice, I never thought about it that way. And I'd have to say, I had never thought about it that way either. This student took her job every Saturday at the SPCA so seriously. She knew that she was making a difference. And how many people here have pets at home? They sort of make a difference, don't they? Like, we just adopted a rescue pup, Olive, who only has three legs. Uh, Olive, I love to come home to Olive. Now, she's still in that sort of, like, bad behavior mode, like, rescue kind of pet. We're still working on that. She's a work in progress. And we're sort of relying on our old dog, Bonnie. How do you like that? Bonnie to help teach her. Um, so uh, food pantry. My first summer here, we discovered that there were SBU students who didn't have enough food. I went to Father Francis, my supervisor, and I said, Father Fran, what do you know about students who don't have food this summer? Because it was summertime. And he goes, what are you talking about? He says, why aren't they going to the cafeteria, to the hickey? I said, because it's not open. And they don't have money for a meal plan. And he goes, well, what do you mean they don't have food? And I said, I talked to these two students. And it was Friday afternoon, and they had two cans of soup in their cupboard for the weekend. He's like, well, what'd you do? I said, well, I was going home, and I had to come back on Saturday for something else. So I brought them back a bag of groceries from my house because I didn't know, like, what we do or what we have in place. Because I'd only worked here three weeks at that point. And he goes, well, we don't really have anything, but we need to figure it out. So we put together a task force, and we put together the SBU food pantry. And um, it took about a year to really get it in a building, but we had food always in the University Ministries kitchen for people. And we let people know that so that nobody ever had to go hungry. Bonnie's take care of Bonnie's. The other thing that's really interesting about this, we made it open to faculty and staff and students. On any given year, Cattaraugus County is between the fourth and sixth poorest county in New York State. We guessed that some of our staff might be food insecure. And you know what? Sometimes some of our staff members come to the food pantry. Now we've worked it out with staff members that they don't have to come during the hours the food pantry is open. They come and see me or they come see Mike Wasita or somebody in our building and we help them out then. Just you know, to try to offer that. If we offer dignity at the warming house, why wouldn't we offer dignity to our faculty and staff here on campus? Um, break the bubble. 
that's pretty cool. Has anybody, did anybody go to the St. Francis Inn here or, okay, one St. Francis Inn person here. So we do service learning trips a uh, couple times a year, much like Bonner Response does. Bonner Response just went down to the Bahamas over spring break. Uh, the Franciscan Center for Social Concern went to Philadelphia to the, to the St. Francis Inn, and we partnered with the Equity Institute, and we took students to Atlanta, and we did a JFK junior experience. Um, so this gets students off campus. Most of those all have service, a service component. All 99% of them have. The only one that didn't was the JFK experience, and we're looking at building in service into that next year. Uh, Silver Wolves, it's our way of connecting with older people in our area. It's a way for Bonaventure students to peek into the lives of elderly people living in assisted living and a way for people living in assisted living to peek into the lives of Bonaventure students and young adults. So there are lots of opportunities for you to do service. When you find out you have to do service for a class, the FCSC is a great place to come. Another great place to go is Jim Mahar in the business school for Bonner Responds. Okay, they mostly build ramps uh, on houses. They offer accessibility to people who can't get out of their homes. So imagine not being able to do stairs and not being able to leave your home. Bonner Responds will put a ramp on your home at no cost so that you can get out of your house, even for safety kinds of things. Okay, so think about that as you think about service, okay, when you have to do service throughout the next few years here. Okay, here's the cool thing. The background of this is the new um, Warming House newsletter that just got sent to the um, printer yesterday and will be coming out in the next week. Over on this side is an article by Walter Kinder here in the middle, and it's an amazing honors project. And that's the honors project that he did and is just getting ready. He'll be presenting at that symposium. Um, it's pretty darn cool. He hasn't told me what the results are yet. He's making me be surprised. Um, and he asked me if I would be willing to take some suggestions. And I said, absolutely. You know the warming house well enough that you can offer us a, a, a true north, <laughs> a way that we can improve. Because that's what we're looking to do. So we were able to help fund him. I, I, I uh, worked it out that he could submit expenses to me up to $1,000 to help him with his travel. So his last soup kitchen he went and visited, these are the guys there. It was another college soup kitchen, and it was in New York City, connected with, uh, the name of it is Hebrew Union College. It's a college that trains rabbis and cantors in the Jewish faith tradition, but they have this soup kitchen. So he he and his dad went down to New York after fall, after fall semester ended. So he sent me pictures of he and his dad in front of the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center and at Times Square. And I mean, it was pretty cool. And we were able to help support that trip for him and, and most of his trips for his um, honors project. So... You might think university ministries, that has nothing to do with my honors project. And I say, let's think again. Our vice president for mission, Father Stephen Mimna, is very, one of his priorities as the mission officer for the university is sustainability. So if you're thinking about, if you're in the sciences or in the, if you're thinking, if you have any interest or passion in sustainability, we could help you out with that. Yeah, because what's Walter's major again? Mathematics. Yep. Yep, he's a math major. As a matter of fact, he's a math major who's going right from his undergrad at Bonaventure to a PhD program. He's been accepted into one program, and I think he's still waiting on a couple more. Um, to go from your undergrad to a PhD program is pretty darn impressive. So if you're thinking about any kind of sustainability, care for creation, um, conservation, ecology issues, university ministries might be able to help you with your honors project or parts of it. See, we're not connected to a school, one of the schools here at the university. So, but yet we have relationships with all the schools. So we can help build some of those connections if you need that. Okay. 
And also, if you need funding, we might be able to help you. I can't promise that, but let's talk about it. Um, marginalized populations. So does anybody here know Dr. Pop, Dr. Bop, or Dr. Walker? Have you met them yet? So um, they are very interested in their research in, uh, like I think Dr. Walker, Walker is like mental health. Yep. And Dr. Bop, what's his area? He like does big data with social science. So yes. He uses machine learning and other things together. So if you are interested in doing a uh, an honors project that had to do with like marginalized populations or mental health or tracking things, for example, in the basement of the warming house, we have a ton of inventory. We've got a lot of product, a lot of food. It's really hard for us to, I mean, we almost have to go to a scanning system to really keep track. I mean, we had a student who several years ago did inventory and we were able to keep it up and maintain it for a while, but doing it by hand is so laborious that it just didn't really work for long-term sustainability. So if somebody was interested, if you just had that kind of analytical mind and a, a sort of an infrastructure mind that would like to do a project that helped set up a system for inventory, uh, taking care of inventory, tracking inventory, that might be another, and I didn't even put it on there, but that might be another one. If you like to benchmark things, much like Walter did, to go collect the same data from five or six different places on a particular issue, then we might be able to help you with that. Access to medical care. That's one of the biggest um, challenges of our guests at the warming house. Access to adequate medical care. Now, it might be for a couple of reasons. It might be because of transportation. It might be because of lack of health insurance. It might be because of lack of doctors. Okay, there's lots of reasons for it. But if you're in one of the sciences and are interested in that, then come talk to us, okay? I would love to be able to write more articles like this in our newsletters in the next five years. Is that helpful? So when you think about university ministries, yeah, we help with, you know, we make sure we have masses on campus and we do things like candlelight vigils and we have faith groups and, you know, we just bought a big labyrinth and we can do a meditation, you know, a walking meditation in the great room. But we're also here to help you with the big questions while you're here at Bonnets. Big questions personally, but also big questions as you work to um, complete your honors projects. I'm Alice Miller Nation. My office is by the back door of University Ministries. There's always candy in my office. Mm -hmm. You're always welcome to stop by. And actually, that building is a great building to study in. Okay? You're at the, I think the building locks at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, but your ID swipes into the front door 24-7. We've got a kitchen in there that students can use. It closes at 10 o'clock at night and opens up again at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we just have a couple of simple rules. Number one, clean up after yourself. Number two, don't steal other people's food to cook. Bring your own food, okay? It's pretty simple. But um, we welcome students into our building all the time. And it's a great place to go study. Okay? Thank you. Does anybody have any great. questions? All right, give her a round of applause.